introduced ourselves or turned the, um, the video off. Yeah, um, kia ora everybody, I'm um, called Sandy Robbins O. Um, I'm a researcher in the science team here at NZCER and as Michael said I have been a science teacher for, for many years before working at NZCER and also a health promoter and a mum and a whole lot of other things as well. And my colleague, colleague, <laughs> <laughs> um, kia ora, I'm um, Kaula Lorraine Spiller O. Um, I've been here since 2008, um, part of the science team and we're very thrilled to be bringing you what we have been doing in national monitoring. Lovely. So we are going to tell you a little bit of a story about national monitoring tonight. Um, and to, can you all see the first slide of our, our this is national, any MSSA science insights. Is that what you're all seeing? Not yet, it's not sharing. So I Am don't I not know, sharing? I don't know what happened. It's not, oh. it's not, it's not actually sharing right now. Okay, right. Screen. So you need to go. Oh, we're on screen two. Okay, here we go. Okay. Is that better? It's coming. Yep, good. Excellent. Okay. All right. So um, uh, we are going to be talking about our national monitoring study and the things that we've found out from the national monitoring study. Um, and I'm just trying to get the thing to move on to the next. Slide. Okay, in this session, so we're going to start off telling you a little bit about national monitoring, what it is, and a little bit of the history and how it all fits in with our science um, capabilities focus. Um, some of the things that we have come out of this 2017 round of national monitoring are some progress indicators in science capabilities, and this is something that we have heard that teachers are really, really um, looking for, and um, hopefully we can help out a little bit in that area. And also some um, real take-home um, insights for teachers. Normally what actually happens is the National Monitoring Study happens, and there's this great big um, publication that, that um, is, is produced. Um, it gets, I think it gets sent to every school, is that right, Lorraine? Yeah. Yep, yep, but um, very few teachers end up seeing it, and, and as a teacher I certainly never saw it, um, although it was NIMP back then. Um, so what um, the Ministry of Education have asked us to do this time, and we were thrilled to be asked, is to create some documents or some publications for teachers um, that you can just have on the copy, copy table at school, pick up something, open the page, read something and go, ah, yes, I can do that. I can make that change right now. That makes sense to me. So um, we have, hopefully, um, we've got something here for you that, that you can find useful and, and very, very helpful in your science lessons. So um, kicking off, what is, what is the National Monitoring Study about? Um, it's the National Monitoring Study of Student Achievement. Um, it provides a snapshot of student achievement it's a collaboration between the Ministry of Education, um, NZCER, and the um, Education Assessment Research Unit at Otago University. National monitoring replaced the old NIMP in 2012. Um, and what it does is it assesses students in year um, four and year eight. Um, we have a cycle each year. Um, and um, in September, there's, there's always testing on one or two subjects. So science was the first off the block with health and PE in 2012, and we've actually had our second round of um, science in 2017. Um, and so now what we've got is we've got data over two time points, and we have got data over two year levels. So the developments on NEMP um, are that National monitoring directly seeks to interpret the New Zealand curriculum, and that's really, really important. And that's why we can give teachers some um, insights into teaching, um, and it's linked to the New Zealand curriculum. And the other thing is, it's a psychometrically robust assessment. So um, it's it's and and um, we yeah, I, won't, I won't actually talk much about that because we'll be here all night, and I'm sure you don't want to be. But um, basically, all data, uh, instead of just looking at students' raw scores, we actually convert students' scores onto a, what we call the science capability scale. And what that allows us to do is compare students from year four to year eight, and also compare students in year four from one round to the next. So we can get some really, really useful data. 
Um, in 2017, we um, changed what we were asking a little bit. We actually decided to focus specifically on science capabilities. So every single question um, was written to a science capability. We used some of the 2012 questions, but um, and they and that wasn't specifically written for the science capability. But we were able to backfill um, science capabilities onto most of those questions. There are some um, uh, purely knowledge questions that remain, and we've kept them there because what we wanted to do was have a look to see how knowledge um, and the science capabilities work, and we've found out that they develop together. So if you are um, focusing on science capabilities, you can't help but focusing on knowledge as well, and vice versa. Um, and the last thing about the science assessment is that it assesses science in two ways. The first way is students do what we call a group assessment task, and that is um, booklets of um, pen and paper assessments where students answer short questions or multi-choice questions. Um, and we... Um, ask all of the schools that take part, and of which there are about 200, uh, 100 schools each year. And so each school provides 25, a class lot of students um, for that assessment. And then we assess using in-depth tasks where we take smaller groups of students and we have a teacher assessor who asks the students to do some kind of experiment and sits with them and asks them questions along the way and these questions that we've, we've written um, so and they're just designed to probe students thinking in a little bit more depth and also to get them talking because what we also know is that students can talk about science in a much more um, varied way and much more deeply than if they're just writing it particularly year four students. So that's a little bit about the national monitoring and Lorraine's now going to tell you about how we um, and why we decided to um, do our assessment based on the science capabilities. Um, so what's on the screen now is a diagram that we've created that um, encompasses for us the whole of the science learning area. Um, it starts at the top with the nature of science because that's the overarching strand. And at the bottom are the contextual strands, um, the living world, planet Earth, beyond, the physical world and the material world. Now when we were teaching, Sandy and I in, um, at college, um, we worked with the living world, we worked with the, with the contextual strands, um, and there were some overlapping strands in there of skills. But the content base of the, of the contextual strands was where most of our work was. Now we, we finally worked out what the nature of science was and how it links to um, those contextual strands. And so we've drawn it in this diagram. So the nature of science at the very top is made up of four substrands, understanding about science, investigating in science, communicating in science, and participating and contributing. And between that nature of science and the contextual strands are the science capabilities. So they link those two areas together. Um, you probably already know this, but this kind of this diagram seems to work a lot for teachers who um, need it as, as a visual form. So if I just go through one of those um, areas, if I go to the substrand about understanding about science, um, this is when the focus is on scientists' work and the capabilities that scientists need to do their work are that they gather and interpret data, they use evidence, and they critique evidence. So what we're doing with the science capabilities really is unpacking what that nature of science um, substrand looks like. And you can't do that unless you've got a context to do it in. So you might do those things in the material world, or you might do those things in the physical world. On top of that, we have a connection with the science capabilities to the key competencies. The language is quite similar in lots of ways, and we also have a connection to um, this to page 17, which is the science essence statement. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> okay, so it talks about having critically informed and responsible citizens. And when you've got this big picture and all these things working together, as we will show you in some of the items that we've been working through, 
it, it produces these, we believe it produces these critically informed and responsible citizens. Back to Sandy. Okay, so how did um, the students in 2017 do in the Science Capabilities Assessment? So what we have here is um, um, two box and whiskers plots, one for year four, um, one for year eight. Um, and on the scale, the, the science capability scale for national monitoring. So like I said before, every single question gets a position on the scale and every single student also gets a position on the scale. And so what we can do is we can work out the mean. So here's the mean for year four and this is the mean for year eight. Um, this is the upper quartile and the lower quartile for year four, um, lower quartile and upper quartile for year eight. Um, and what we've drawn on here is where we would expect students to achieve at the different curriculum levels. So if a student's in an emerging curriculum level one and two, we would expect them to be working in this area of the scale. Developed level one and two in this area of the scale. Now this is year four. Um, emerging level three and four in this area and developed level three and four. Now, so the year fours are doing fine. They are achieving where they would be expected to achieve, or at the curriculum level that they would be expected to be achieving at. What we found with the year eights is, is they're actually not quite achieving at the level, the curriculum level that we would be expecting. They're supposed to be achieving up in here. So 20% of year, year eights are achieving up in this area here. Um, and, um, the other thing that we found is the distribution between year four and year eight is, is very similar to 2012. Um, and that's for the population um, mean and upper quartile and lower quartile. However, there are some significant subpopulation groups who have actually done a lot better in 2017. And they are year four Asian girls, um, year eight girls, Year eight Maori students, year eight Pacifica students, um, and year four and year eight in lower decile schools. So all of those small groups have actually um, done better in 2017 than they did in 2012. Do we hear if anybody's got any questions? Ah, are there any questions? I've got a question. <laughs> cool. Here. How, who, how did you develop the scale? Oh. <laughs> okay. okay, it's called it's called it's called rash modelling, and um, it's complicated. Um, basically, the it, it's in the it's in the it's in the report. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, um, and I, I wonder if we can come back to that because oh, that's all right. Yes, I'm just fascinated. I know, but it will take Cindy a long time to explain it. <laughs> so I oh, uh, shall read the report. Yes. Well, no, it's, it's yeah. in the main report, and there's a big section on the rash modelling and how and how we got to and how we got made the scale. Okay, so okay. For, for all NZCR's PAT tests, we also yeah. use the same rash modelling. And yeah. um, do are you familiar with the PAT tests? Yes, I am. Yeah. So what what um, what can happen is a student can do. Um, test one one year and test three the next year and you can directly compare the two scale scores um, and you can compare students within a class you can compare yeah. their scale scores and they might have all done different tests it's because every single question um, gets put on on the scale and it's it's, it's we, we create the scale um, when we do the um, trialing the questions um, yeah. and also from one um, science round to the next, we actually um, create the, the, the next science round by taking questions from the previous one, looking at the scale score of those, and fitting the new questions in, um, in between, um, yes. depending on how the students did. Does that yes. help? That is helpful. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great. Okay, so this picture that you've got now in front of you is um, one of the reports that um, we produced. Um, what we wanted, like I said before, is to produce a useful report for teachers, um, something that's colourful and concise, and you can take it away and try it in your five minutes after you go back to your classroom after morning tea time. It's called, this is called the Insights Report. There are four insights which we'll talk about shortly. Um, and this report 
shows you examples of the sorts of items we used and we also show you some typical student responses um, and we discuss what those student what those responses mean um, and what teachers can do to help students move up to the next level. Um, right through this report there are links to the assessment resource bank um, so teachers can just click on the ARB um, and, and go to the ARB and then the students can practice what we're talking about. Um, and you can download um, the, the report from the National Monitoring um, website. Now, sorry, don't go away. Uh, you have to stay till the end of this now because <laughs> we're gonna give you the website at the very end. <laughs> okay, so am I still on, Lorraine? I think you are. Oh, I am, okay. Mm -hmm. So this first report that we produced has, um, is, is built around four practical insights. So the first, and I'm gonna talk about this shortly, is measurement is really important to adding meaning. And this is something that um, you can, you can um, teach your students immediately. The second is um, using evidence to support a position is, is a really important skill for students to develop. Um, explaining like a scientist is about precision and clarity. And we'll talk a little bit about what, what that means, but we won't give you examples of this, the last two. And Lorraine's gonna talk about how um, important evidence is built up from systematic exploration. These are all, um, these are all tagged to specific items, but of course there's lots and lots of other insights um, from the items that we did. So these are just the four that, that we pulled out to put into the booklet. Um, but they're all important ones, like Sandy said. Okay, so the first one, measurement adds meaning. So this is a question that we've used in the last two rounds. So it's a graph of the river flow on, I think it's the Rangitake River, um, over 18 days. And um, the students were asked to look at the graph. It's year eight students, so we wouldn't expect year four students to be able to do this, but we think that year eight students should be able to read a graph, um, a line graph like this. But it's a bit of a tricky one because it's actually shows river flow and many students actually confuse this with a wave in the river so um, it was a very tricky question for the students anyway what we wanted to know was what was the approximate water flow on the first Sunday so what do you think it was does anyone want to care to answer <laughs> I'm, I'm, you all I'm, still pretty, I'm pretty sure you've all, you've all <laughs> worked it out, but you're just too scared to Okay, say. so, this, so was, this was question one. Yeah. Uh, Sandy was talking about the one that was more difficult was question two. So, yeah, yeah. So, so lots of the students were able to answer this. So they yeah. could read the y-axis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. so the marking scheme was, they got within a particular number range. Yeah. Okay, so this is some, exa some um, samples of student answers. So... Um, this student here, can you see my cursor? Um, yep. Says, okay, 25 cubic meters per second, and we had about 30, 39 cubic meters, or m cubed, um, and this person put the wiggly line in 35. Um, so, this is the answer. What is it about these answers that that uh, are, are tricky. And the, what we did is, is we thought, okay, um, we'll, we'll, give, we'll, we'll allow a range. So I think we added 20 to about 30 for the answer. Yeah, they could get within, they could get from 30, was it 30 to 50? Something, oh, 25 to 50 or something. But when you're talking about 25 to 50 or 30 or, or a number, it, it means nothing. So what we were looking for, even though we didn't specifically say and didn't specifically ask, we were looking for the students to be thinking, what does this mean? And if they're going to talk about what it means, they need to give um, the, unit. the unit. And so this, this is the correct question here. And there's, so, the, unit. And there's the unit. Um, so there's a couple of things here. Students know, need to know if they're engaging with something and they're thinking about the meaning of what they're writing, the meaning 
doesn't it doesn't make sense unless there's a unit and that is something that can be taught really really quickly also there's a little bit in here in this what does m cubed per second mean so so um there needs to be some instruction about what um how units are um are shown in science how you represent a unit um so that was the first thing did that, you all that's... get that right yes Oh, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So that was the first thing that jumped out at us. Um, yeah, this is the second. Okay, so so this is one of the in tasks, the practical in task um, tasks, um, and this was both year four students and year eight. So they sat with a teacher assessor who asked them these questions. So this is a script that the teacher assessor throat um, and I'm just going to give you a few minutes to actually read the script. Okay, have you had enough time? It's very hard when you yes, have feedback. Hard. I know. So, my question here is, oh, take a bit. Oh, yep. What we do you must see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think that we were looking for when we, when we wrote this item? Um, what do you think we were looking for from the students? Now, what watch the video. My, sorry. sorry? Sorry, did you want us to answer? I was going to say whether they yeah. observations um, rather than jumping to inferences, I would say one of the... Say it again, sorry. Whether they could make accurate observations and not just jump straight to an inference, maybe? Yes, one of the... yes good. Yes, we were interested in the observations very much, yes. And anybody else? Uh, the use of tentative language. Yes, yes, yes. Anyone else? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased we've got two of you there. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I just added testing to the chat. So that process, I mean, you've got the title there, Systematic Exploration, but yes, that's yes. trying different things yes. and, yeah. yeah. Until you get there. Okay, so, you know, what, um, what, what happened with this is that Oh, they did this on video and I went through the videos, you know, or lots and lots and lots of videos of the students doing this. So um, it, it was it was very interesting. The year eight students rattled the container, looked in the other container and saw what different items were there and said, it's a pen. And they just put it aside. The year fours also said it was a pen, but when the, they were questioned, they would try various things. Now we didn't open the sealed container and it kind of is a little bit of um, indicative of what's happening with year eight students that they're looking for an answer. Okay, so if we, re if we look at what we were looking for, systematic exploration, we, we were wanting the students to eliminate alternatives, plausible alternatives. We wanted them to try different things out and test them against the, uh, you know, the other container. Mm. To, and then we wanted them to actually say things like, I can't be that because it's, you know, maybe because the sound isn't, isn't right, it sounds a bit, you know, thuddy, like if it was, a, a, if it was an eraser or if it was a marble, it, it's, it, I can hear it rolling, it's got a different kind of a sound. We were wanting them to start building evidence even when they were sure, even when they knew that they thought, sort of thought it was a, um, a biro. Um, and we wanted them to, to give an explanation about why the, those alternatives were not correct, because it doesn't sound right, it sounds a bit thuddy, it, mm. um, it's rolling, it's sliding, or all those kind of things. So what my next question is, to get students to do that, instead of just going straight to an answer, what kind of questions in the script led the students to, to try that?
Well, I, I suppose it's questions like, um, what makes you think so? Yep. Um, how can you be sure? Those things, when in yes. fact you're actually getting them to explain why they're thinking that way? Yes. Yes, exactly. So um, it's about the questions you ask them, isn't it, to get them to try and develop their thinking, to try and give evidence for their explanations, to try things out. So, yes, that's exactly what we were trying to do there. So those, the marking scheme was kind of like, if you tried one thing out, it was, you know, like, uh, it was given a one, but if you tried two or three different alternatives, the student was marked a two, and those scores are the ones that decided whether the students were at the right level or not quite at the right level, um, the, the, the diagram that Sandy showed you before. Okay. Yeah, so what Can we... Can I ask we, you something? Yes. Did you, when, when you were doing this, did you um, uh, sort of um, score them on the, either the way that they investigated or the, whether they had a, a, a sort of procedure that they, they developed a procedure to go through? No, just whether or not they investigated. Okay, all right. So, just I mean... The number of times they investigated, really. I, 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 it, would, it would be interesting doing something like this and then giving them another box with, say, a bit of roll of sellotape in it or something and saying, mm -hmm. okay, using a technique you used first time, what's the difference? Yeah, that might be the next round, um, Michael. Because, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, the, the, yeah. So, this is, the, this is one of the um, insights that we're putting forward for teachers so they get to understand why what we're looking at and that, that to us this is this is one of the science capabilities this is one of the mm. investigating and science capabilities mm. that we're looking for mm. and uh, and also this this kind doing this kind of activity um gives students um an opportunity to practice explanations so um when things seem really obvious like you're shaking a, a container and it you, you know it's a pen and you know, they think they know it's a pen and um, so they're not willing to actually um, state the obvious. I think it's a pen because, um, and we found time and time again when we were marking um, the national monitoring, that, that students would see something that they were very, very familiar with and they would stop at giving the answer and, and not um, providing the, the evidence to back it up or not continuing um, in, in an investigation even when they were asked to continue doing an investigation. So, um, and this is just one example of where we, we saw that, and I'll talk about another one shortly. Can I um, ask just quickly a question? Sure. Where, was it explained to the students that you were looking for specifically the explanation and the testing part? No, no. Because yeah. this is a, this is, we did a, a, a summative assessment. We expect students to be curious in doing these things. This, what we're now doing is giving insights to teachers about ways that, that, that we are testing so that they might do this kind of practice in their classrooms. So we're, we're, we're I, um, I'm interested to explore the difference between year four and eight. Do you think developmentally the, the, the year fours were just more curious and interested in taking risks? So a lot of teachers think that. I mean, a lot. Yeah, a lot of people. Well, I mean, just interest from your evidence. Did you notice that? Um, looking at the videos, uh, I actually felt that I think sometimes the year four students are more are more keen to do what the teacher asks them. So uh, they're following this, the, the 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 instructions because they mm. are keen to follow the instructions. Whether they would do that, you know without the teacher assessor asking them to, I'm not sure. But the year yeah. four students didn't have a very good reading skills. So this is one of the activities that you had to do by, you know, by telling them, you know, by, by reading it to them. Mm -hmm. The year eight students were just after the answer. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. What makes you sure? I just know, you know, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. They, they were determined and they didn't see any point in going any further. Yep. Mm. Because we think that that they're used to going for an answer. Going for the answer. So mm. the teacher, so, so um, you know, if they give the answer, yes, you're right. 
Um, and so, so as, as, as students get older, that they're, they're taught um, that the answer is what's, what's important. But what we're trying to do is go, hey, hang on a minute, the answer is important, but the evidence is, is important. And mm. describing the evidence, that's important. Um, and being curious, that's also important. So looking a bit further and looking outside the box rather than just giving the answer. Right, okay, so that's that's the insights. We also, um, several of our assessments were designed to in, um, involve numeracy skills in science, um, in the science context. And um, um, students were given a, a shell, and this is one of the questions was that students were given a shell and they were given a ruler and they were given a shell ID chart. So that was it, so that was just put in front of them. Um, firstly, they were asked to draw the shell and if they hadn't labelled it, they were asked if they think it should be labelled. And then they, um, they were asked to draw their picture so that um, it could be used to help someone work out what the actual shell, what animal the shell was from. Um, and then the second part was the numeracy part. The students were asked, if someone wants to know how big the shell is, what would you do to show them? And students found this really, really difficult. Many just said, you get the ruler and measure it. And, and what we were looking for was some kind of an explanation. We wanted to say what they were going to measure. We wanted them to explain how, we wanted them to, to, to show some idea of the size of their shell. Um, and and it, it was another one of these obvious things, get a ruler. Everyone knows that a ruler is for measuring, so just use the ruler. Um, but we were looking for more than that. Um, and well, they would say things like, it's, it's the normal size. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and then some, and then every now and again, someone would go, well, I've got it in the palm of my hand and it just fits on the curvy bit in the palm of my hand. And you're going, wow, they haven't used the ruler but they've actually given us more information there on how big that shell is than by just saying, just use a ruler. Mm -hmm. So we were looking for um, other ways other than the ruler that you could use as well. So what do we find? We um, found that students didn't have a, a way of measuring. They, um, they, 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 they weren't prepared to, to think up ways and think of something interesting um, out, out of out of the ordinary and they gave the name of the tool that is the ruler but they didn't describe how or what the measurement was so that didn't seem to us that they didn't appreciate that this measurement is is, is part of of the science Sandy and i were talking about that before and i think it's similar to what we discovered um, we went back, we were talking about a little while ago i think the students are thinking about they're talking to the, you know, to their teacher, you know what a ruler is, so I don't have to tell you that you measure it with a ruler or, you know, or how you measure it with a ruler, so they just say, use the ruler. Um, so again, it's that, that, it's that unpacking of what they need to do to give a proper explanation. So that's, that's all we're going to say about numeracy. There's a lot more about that in, in the um, publication as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll just pop on to literacy. And again, I'm just going to gloss through this really, really quickly because we've actually gone now for 40 minutes. So um, we need to keep tracking along. So um, we also designed to um, our tests to um, assess literacy. It's reading and writing in the science context as well. We wanted to know if students knew the conventions of communicating in a science way um, to talk like a scientist um, or if they used every la everyday language um, and, and everyday language features. Um, so what we found was that in reading tasks at year four students didn't really use the supporting material. So what we would do is we might have a little explanation and then we have a photograph and we might ask them to describe a photograph or something like that. And we found that they actually didn't didn't read the question carefully um, or or didn't actually even use the other supporting material to formulate their answer to a great enough extent. And at year eight, um, we used a lot more different um, 
specialised science texts like graphs, tables, diagrams. Um, and so we were expecting students to draw on those and use those, and sometimes more than one in one question as well. So that's for the reading tasks. Um, in the writing tasks, um, we, what we were looking for is students needed to use, in, in the science context, students need to use precise language for clear communication. Um, and so um, they also needed to use this topic specific language. Um, in science, the tone is objective and reasoned and, and in the present tense. And um, one of the tasks that they had to do is they got given a picture of a Kia and it was a black and white picture. And sitting next to it was a 50, an old 50 cent piece, so a bigger one. And students were asked to describe the Kia to somebody um, so that they could recognise um, that that was a Kia. Um, and many students sort of talked about how the Kia was green, um, but it was actually a black and white photograph. So they weren't using the picture, even though this, the question specifically said use this picture. Um, others were going, it's a cute little thing, it's got, it's got great big beady eyes and um, pokey claws and things like that. So oh, beady eyes. Oh, beady, yeah, yeah. Beady, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, well, and words like cute and, and, yeah, and funny and cheeky and, and, and mm. things like that. Um, so um, that's the sorts of things we were looking for in literacy. And again, there are a couple of questions that we, um, um, we describe in, in the text as well. It's quite a big section and it's really good to have a look at. There's quite a lot of student um, voice in there, student answers, and they've unpacked for you. So it's a good section to go and have a look at. Okay. All right. So now we're on to, uh, um, once we've done the insight report, the ministry asked us um, then to produce a progression from level two to level four for students. They got quite excited about um, how we were, about how the items were being quite specific about various things that students needed to be able to show that they could do. So we were able to show what progression looked like from year four to eight, and we did it across the science capabilities. Because as Sandy had said before, every one of our items was attached to a science capability and we thought if we're going to do it let's do it so that you can see progression across each of the five science capabilities and of course they are the things that link everything together um, uh, so when we did this and we put it all together in what we call the rainbow diagram so in this booklet here science in the new zealand curriculum so I think the rainbow diagram is on about page seven. So we'll go to that. Now you're not gonna be able to read this. I'll actually get a better, better image for you. Um, but this is what it kind of looks like spread out. Um, and you can actually see the different capabilities down here and the progress indicators for the science um, capabilities at the levels up here. But I'm gonna let Lorraine talk about it and I'm gonna find an, an enlarged picture. Um, that one there. Right. We call it a rainbow because we've got a different colour for each capability. Um, it doesn't go downwards because um, because it gets because it, it doesn't end. It's it's uh, something that keeps on going. There's more and more levels to come. Um, the under each of the each of the items for level two uh, had we unpacked. They had a particular criteria that students needed to do to be able to answer them. Um, in gather and interpret data at level two, the students needed to make observations about events and objects using their senses. They needed to use simple descriptive vocab and simple explanations drawing on the observations. So it's all about them doing, talking, thinking and explaining in everyday context. And then they had to ask simple questions about um, familiar context. So it's again, it's the um, observe, oh, what do, you, what do you notice, what do you think, and what's the third one? What do you notice, what do you think, and what do you wonder? So those are the, that, that's the, the basis at level two, which is year four. So we had items that fitted that, and that's what students showed us they could do at gather and interpret data. At use evidence, 
they were making claims about things, but they weren't backing up their claims with evidence, even with the in-depth tasks when they were asked questions by, by, by the teacher assessor. So we didn't get anything for them in critique evidence, can you keep rolling down, or interpret representations or engage in science. Now we couldn't, the, those two critique evidence and interpret representations are quite, um, they're quite specific knowledge, uh, quite a lot of knowledge goes into those about what, what you're looking for in science and, and, and reading graphs and um, critique evidence, you have to know all about fear testing or something or, or big ideas to actually then be able to go in and say what's, what's missing here. So we wouldn't expect year stu four students to say, to be able to do that. So of course we didn't have items, or we did write items, but the students couldn't do it, so we got no data for it. Um, and engage in science, students do have some ideas about engaging in science because, you know, they do projects about rubbish and they do projects about um, pollution in their streams. But to write items to assess those meant a big reading load, and of course they're not reading very well at that stage, so we, we couldn't assess that either. There might be something there in the future and we will start to work mm. items in the in-depth task to try and engage them in that at the time um, when, when we come around to the next one. So this is a work in progress um, and this is based on one round of national monitoring. Next time we, and it's not to say that students at year four don't critique evidence or interpret representations or engage in science, it's just that none of the questions we asked actually um, at the year four level actually Assess that. So, um, well, well yeah. we did, but they didn't make it. Yeah, they didn't yeah, make it because they couldn't read it. Mm. But also, the kind of level that they were doing critique evidence or engage in science is a very low level, and it wouldn't be what we would be wanting to. Look, we would be starting there. Mm. So, it could, you know, some people might say, well, they can critique evidence because they they can peer review, but it depends what type of peer review they're doing. Um, so anyway, there, there is, like Sandy says, it's a work in progress. Um, so here we've got above level two. Because we didn't have a marker in that level three, we, we kind of, well, we do have a marker in that level three. We might actually eventually change that. It probably should be level three. So students are testing their everyday knowledge now, and they'll work in a range of contexts, including some that, that, that are unfamiliar. So now it's not just familiar, but unfamiliar familiar, um, contexts that they can they can use, and they're, their reading is a lot better. They can shape their explanations. They can look for observations and photographs, and they can start to ask questions like, I wonder what, and the type of questions that they can come up with can be investigations, can lead to investigations. They're starting to really understand a lot more of science. Um, they are making claims now and backing them with evidence. If we drop down. Um, and they are, they are beginning to do some critiquing because they can identify a problem in the data, and they're starting to use some interpret representations like some graphs and diagrams, food chains and life cycles, um, and they're using science conventions to organise data into graphs and tables. So, and then it goes up again, we've now got level four, we go up to try and get it down there. Try <laughs> Level four, and now it's now they're more often working in unfamiliar contexts. It's starting to get more complex and above level four, which is the beginning of level five. Um, it's becoming increasingly complex, um, and they are starting to apply their science knowledge. At level four, they're building science knowledge. At level above level four, when they get into level five. They've got enough to actually start applying it across different, um, not contexts, but across uh, transferring their knowledge across different contexts. Um, now, are there any questions about this? <clears throat> um, Kiona, it, it's really neat to see these ideas out uh, in one that are grouping in one progression like this. Um, I guess, having looked at it very briefly, my question was how do we make sure teachers that get this don't think that 
students don't need to be exposed to um, like the last or level two students don't need to be exposed to the last three capability? Um, I think, I, I, yeah, I think, I, I, yeah, um, I think they needed to have attended some of our workshops so that they, yeah. can, <laughs> they can hear the information. I, I, I think this national monitoring um, progressions table has come from data, it's come from actual evidence. So we're actually practicing what we preach and we can't, we can't populate those sections if we haven't got evidence to put in them. So I kind of say to teachers, if you think there are, there are things that go in there, use it as a template for your school and, and populate it with information that, that you can see that's happening in, your, in, your, in those areas. And this is very much a work in progress. And so as we get more data and we do another round of national monitoring, we might be able to add more to this. We might move stuff from one um, area to another and hopefully we will start to have some descriptions in this bit here. But when we've done um, workshops with, and showed teachers this, they, t the teachers there was, were saying, no, no, my students do critique evidence. They, they do this, they, you know, they, they, and they'd, they'd describe what these students were doing, which was critiquing evidence. So they could actually tell us. Um, they probably yeah. didn't have students at level um, one and two. I think what they were talking about might have been students that might have been level one and two students, but working at level three. You know, mm. I mean, it, it, it's it like it is. It, this relates to what we saw from our from our um, our test, and it tested over a thousand students across the country, level four and level eight, and this was what they were. So uh, as in, it's the average. So if your students are, you know, you might be working quite quite a lot in engaging in science. You might be doing some big studies and they might be working maybe at level four um, in that area. So, you, but are they working at level four in all of the science capabilities, you know, it's, it is a pattern, it is something to look at and work from. Thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm, it's Jen here again, because okay. I'm fascinated by this. Um, so, the, the, are you saying that the, um, with your next um, round of testing, there's an opportunity for you to think when you're looking at the item to provide situations where you might be able to capture some of the evidence that was missing from this round in things like critiquing evidence. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, so they, they did suggest to us that we could populate that with um, with information from our arts resources, but this yes. is a national monitoring. Yeah. So we, we, we just use the evidence that we had. Yeah. No, I think it's wonderful. Mm. Um, so we, sorry, Anne. Hello? Andrew here. Just, hi, Andrew. Hi, uh, just from my point of view, um, I think what would be really beneficial would be exemplars to go against the indicators. And I was also kind of looking at, it's kind of very much like um, packed. So when your next kind of round of testing, would there be kind of an idea of where you think it could become part of the pack tool? I'm not sure about the pack tool, but in, in our booklet, we do have examples of mm. gather and interpret data at level two, at level four. Yeah, well, I think it would just be, if it was very, if it was more explicit, like for each indicator, like so to say, to gather and interpret data at level two, make observations about events and objects using their senses. If there was a direct example or off that at level two, I think it would become extremely valuable for teachers because then they can see exactly what it's like. We have got some work that we've been doing, um, a guide for teachers um, and parents, which is the next stage, but okay. and with some information like that. But as you can imagine, Andrew, if we give you one example about what that might look like, we're a bit worried that teachers will go, well, that's okay, can take that. But it goes across, many, we want many different examples of them doing that over many different contexts yeah but if you take something like the pack tool that's what that would do it will give you different examples of kind of each kind of element 
Oh, that might be next. We well, we do have. Um, we, we when we create our arbs now, we um, um, we connect our arbs to the science capabilities as well, and also to uh, um, year levels. And um, in in the booklets, um, we actually give links to the arts that are, are relevant for that particular mm. um, thing that we're talking yeah. about. So so maybe um, some more of that and, and that actually gets people um, into the assessment resource bank and, and fossicking around in there and finding stuff and finding other stuff that might be useful as well. Yeah. So um, yeah. We've um, just sent, oh sorry Zanny, we've just sent um, a tiny little uh, iteration to this. On the last page, there is a list of other um, resources where you can f where you can find examples to use. But we're yeah. going to put two links, one to the ARBS and one to the TKI site, on the rainbow diagram so that teachers, if they're looking for examples for use and interpret data, they can go to the ARBS. On that site, it will say, "Here's." There's a table with each of the each of the science capabilities and level one and two, level three, level four, level five, and you and the number of um, items that are there. You just click on the number and you at the site where there's lots of different um, examples. So there's lots of different items that that do that that show you. So they could be your exemplars. That would, that would yeah. work really well. It? Well, it's a start. Yeah. It's, mm. it's a start, Andrew. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Thanks. So okay. I'm going to go back to our um, our slideshow now. Yeah. So we're on to the and last this is one. The, this is the last. Okay. Last story. <laughs> yeah. So as a finale, we wanted to show you that science is also about knowledge. So you know, students need to know stuff. This is a diagram um, that was given to. This, no, this is a diagram that Year Eight students um, drew. They had a written story about the hoo-hoo beetle and they were asked to draw a life cycle diagram from that story. And two, these, these are examples from two students. So I want you to have a really good look at those two life cycle drawings. And can you decide which of those two has done the best, which student has done the best job? Now they, have, they aren't named, but you can say the one, can you say the one on the left or the one on the right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was Yusefa was on the left and Wang was on the right. Anybody willing yeah. to? I'm willing to do it because you know I'm I'm so old. No one would want me in a classroom anymore, anyhow. <laughs> well, um, you don't have to. You don't have to because I'll, I'll because I, it won't be I the go for the left hand side diagram because it's actually asking. It's doing what they ask. Well, the right yeah. one is just putting additional information and making it look pretty. I know. Yeah. 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 So you're right. right. So the one on the left is actually a life cycle. The, the criteria for a life cycle is that the arrows go in one direction, or well, they both do that, that mm. it labels the um, stages, the life cycle stages, and the first one has the eggs and the grub and the pupa and the adult. Mm. The other one has the, uh, what does it have, eggs, changes into a pupa, then the adult, but then it has a mating process in there <laughs> which isn't really so it's miss it's actually missing the um grub section and it's and mm -hmm. and it's got an extra process which isn't the life cycle mm. um and the third thing that it's doing is that often when we do um arrows like you know wide arrows like that they are kind of a an indication of size rather than a cycle we use those mostly for force diagrams mm. yeah you can tell that the student on the left has been taught the conventions of science the student on the right has done a really 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 good job but but hasn't got it but hasn't i don't think he's been taught the conventions correctly um mm. so 
what we were wanting here, and it's quite tough really, is that students are using the conventions of science and they're working across different representations. It was hard. They had to take written text and convert it into a, a diagram, into a drawing. Um, yeah. And that they're using the science vocab. They selected the science vocab to put um, in their diagram. So they have to know these things. They have to have been taught this. So, so science is quite a specific discipline. If we, and there are some things that we need to teach to teach students. Mm. If we, and so that's a knowledge kind of thing. And I think interpret representations is quite a lot about um, knowledge about science conventions. When you went back to the mystery object, what did that tell us? You know, when we, when we were asking them to test various things, we weren't looking for the answer. We were looking for the processes about how, how to do science investigations. So just those two things help students become this knowledgeable and able to critique as critically informed students. There are other things, but it's quite a science, it's quite a select um, a select group of things that they need to be able to do it really well. And that's very tough to land on there and finish with that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for, for coming today. We hope we have given you a bit of a taster of what's in the two um, um, reports that we published for teachers. Um, and we'd, we'd love some feedback if, if you get to get yourself a copy. Um, if you want the first one, the Insights Report, you can get that by downloading it from the National Monitoring site. Um, and the Progress Report is, is on Science Online. So, um, Michael, I believe everyone gets um, the PowerPoint presentation, is that right? So you would actually... Um, get these in there. Is that correct? Well, I have recorded this and I was going to put the recording onto um, YouTube. Um, the PowerPoint, if you send the PowerPoint presentation to me and or to Jen, yep. then, we, then we can make sure that that's circulated. The other thing too is that you could send me the, um, those two links at the bottom. Yep. If you email those to me, I can make sure they go up onto the Facebook page as well. Yep, okay, that sounds great. And um, I'd like to thank you very much for your presentation. I think it was fascinating. Mm. Um, it was, I, I was gobsmacked a lot. That's why you didn't hear much from me. Um, <laughs> so it was, it was really, really good. I enjoyed it very much. I'm sure the rest, everybody else did. Um, are there any, um, are you okay for some questions? If people yes, have any? yep, sure. So I'll, I'll throw it open now if anybody's got any questions or feedback that they'd like to give to these wonderful folk. Go ahead. Don't forget to switch on your microphone though. Uh, just really big thank you for your time and um, being able to hear sort of the stories <clears throat> behind the reports and also hear you pick out some of the important bit um, makes me want to, to dig even deeper into them. So thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Um, Lorraine, it's um, Jen here again, Lorraine and Sandy. Um, I'm interested that the ministry asked you to do this. Is this something they're going to ask um, for all of the learning areas? Well, the Insight mm -hmm. Reports, yes, has, is now um, coming through with health and oh, maths. fabulous. Yeah. Yep. 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 Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's wonderful. It's just such a, a useful, um, um, it's, it's making it accessible to people. And I think that is wonderful. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's what we were hoping for. Yeah. Mm. That's great. Okay, folks. Well, um, I've noticed a couple of people in the chat um, saying thank you as well. Mm. Um, if there's no more questions, um, I'd like to say thanks again, Lorraine and Sandy been a really good evening and um, I will end the meeting. Okay. Okay. Thanks Are we Michael. Okay we'll be in touch tomorrow with those um with those uh, things we need to send you. Okay. Cheers. Thanks okay. a lot. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Take care.
Bye. Enjoy the spring. Bye-bye. Yeah, you too.